What are the three types of muscles in the body? Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video, we're gonna explore the characteristics of the three different classifications of muscle types in the body. But before I go any further, I just wanna let you know that you can test your knowledge using three mock questions following today's content. If you're on our blog, just scroll underneath this video and you will see the mock questions there. If not, then you can click the link that is with this video and it will take you straight to it. So let's dive into what these three types of muscles are. You have skeletal, cardiac and smooth muscle types. And we're going to dive into the characteristics of each one of these. And they all have very different purposes in the body. So you'll need to know this as part of your level two and your level three anatomy and physiology exam. In particular, because when you're learning things like, say, the muscles of the body, Actually, what we're learning is just one of those. We're learning the skeletal muscles like the biceps, like the quadriceps, they're skeletal muscles. Whereas there are also two other very different types of muscle characteristics and muscle types in the body. So let's start off with skeletal muscles. This is whereby they are voluntary and striated. Now, voluntary means that they're under our voluntary control. So in terms of how they're linked up with our central nervous system and our peripheral nervous system, we can control when they, when they contract and when they relax. The benefit of this is that we can then use it for things like uh, doing exercise, walking, moving, writing. There are skeletal muscles and they create movement by pulling on the bones. Therefore, it's skeletal means bones and our skeletal muscles pull on those bones to create movement at a joint. Now, part of this characteristic is that they are striated. So they're voluntary and striated. Striated means that they basically have lines in them. They're stripy. <laughs> They're kind of stripy from the origin to the insertion. And that line is the line of fibre. So the muscle fibres all stack up and they follow that line from origin to insertion. And amongst that, they also have sarcomeres that are broken up along the length of the muscle, which allow for it to shorten and elongate to allow for a forceful contraction in one direction, which helps with that being able to pull on a, on a bone to create movement at a joint. And that's the most important thing to remember with skeletal muscles. It's a powerful contraction in one angle because they are voluntary and they are striated. So they're the key bits of information and examples of this would be your biceps brachii, your pectoralis major, your quadriceps or your rectus femoris, all of the skeletal muscles. The next one we need to know about is cardiac muscle. So cardiac muscle is involuntary and striated. So we've had voluntary and striated already. The only difference here, and the cardiac muscle is only found in the heart. So it's only found in the heart, and the main difference is that it's now involuntary, which is just as well, isn't it? Because we don't want to have to think about, need my heart to contract, need my heart to contract, need my heart to contract. Instead, we want that to be involuntary. It happens automatically and to keep us alive and keep the blood pumping through the heart. So the heart muscle is the only muscle in the body that is cardiac. And that means that it is uh, involuntary and striated. Remember the striated means it's a forceful contraction and it's got those striations of muscle fibers that allow for that forceful contraction to happen every time you have that heartbeat. The third type of muscle is a smooth muscle. Now this type is quite different again. It's involuntary again, but this time it's smooth instead of striated. So it's not got any stripy lines on it. Instead, it's smooth in texture. And these will be found in the digestive system, in our veins, in our arteries. And these types of smooth muscle almost contract, instead of in one forceful contraction, they contract in like this undulating contraction that allows liquid or fluid or items to move along it. The word for this is peristalsis, and that's used in our digestive system. And if you imagine our small intestine moving food along, it basically contracts around the diameter of that small intestine. So around the, the, the edge of it starts to contract. So around the circumference starts to contract. And as that does, it forces the, the contents onto the next stage. And then it contracts there and it forces it onto the next stage. So instead of it being a forceful contraction, it creates this undulating kind of snake-like movement. And if you think about vasodilation and vasoconstriction, this is inside our arteries and veins, our blood vessels, whereby they are, let's say, this shape, and then they 
they might vasoconstrict, which is whereby the walls constrict inwards, which restrict blood flow. Vasodilation is the opposite of that, where they dilate and they open up to allow more blood flow through, which is what happens when we're nice and warm and we're exercising and we can maybe get like rosy cheeks. That's vasodilation. Also part of like where, why we sweat and bring, uh, brings our temperature back down. But that's all happening via these smooth muscle contractions that are happening inside the arteries as a result of this non-forceful, non-striated, instead of smooth type of muscle that is contracting and forcing the movement of the content through it, whether that's food and feces inside the small intestine or whether that's blood inside our blood vessels. It allows for that movement along it. And this is also involuntary, so we don't have to think about it happening. It happens automatically. So they are our three types of muscles that we have in the body. We had skeletal, cardiac and smooth, and they all have very different characteristics and we need them all, just as important as each other. If you want to test your knowledge on what you've just learned, then make sure you go and check out those three mock questions that are below this video. You can then also, if you find that this is very tricky or you're really struggling to learn your level two and three anatomy and physiology knowledge, then please do check the link that is with this video regarding our revision mastery boot camps. Because if you like these types of videos, they're going to really help you be able to chunk down information and learn it in an easier way with simplicity and structure. And that's what we do inside the bootcamp. So you can find us by following the link that's alongside this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Before I go, I would love for you to drop a comment below this video, letting me know what your big takeaway is. What's the thing you've learned from this video today? Remember to do the mock questions that are alongside. And if you are on YouTube, you can hit subscribe so you get all future videos from us as well. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.